Welcome. Welcome to November the 4th. I believe it is the 4th. It is the 4th. So, exciting news. I am getting everything loaded up. Uh, I have totally torn everything apart and I'm trying to reorganize, but uh, I think I'm pretty much there. We are headed out for what I'm calling my probably 90% chance, sure. This will be my last hunt of the year. We are taking, obviously, the Yetis. As always, we're taking my mom's side by side. She was generous enough to let me take it over to Colorado. We have the back, fully loaded. We've got the Camp Chef grill, we got a gas can, we got a propane can, we got a lot of clothing, some hunting stuff, some food, uh, shooting arrest in case somebody needs to shoot their gun. We have Mark Boardman's rifle he shipped out to me. We have Mark Boardman's suitcase that he shipped out to me. What else do I need? We need two other rifles. Two, so whether it be six and a half by 300s. This is mine, this is Bryant's. We have a box full of goodies that Mark shipped out to me from Vortex. Uh, we have some walkers, we have some boots, we have some toothbrushes in the back. We pretty much have it all. I hope anyways. I've spent the last day and a half getting ready. So the scenario is, I'm leaving tonight from Pocatello. I have to pick Mark Boardman up in Salt Lake at the airport at 8.50 p.m. Eric has some things to do in the morning and then he'll will be driving over tomorrow, uh, later. And Brian is somewhere in Colorado right now with his wife. He just got done with the Missouri hunt and he's with his wife, I think, in Boulder, Colorado for a few days, and then he's either gonna come over tomorrow or come over Tuesday and join us. We are leaving Logie here this time. So me, Eric, and Brian are gonna have some big boy, some big boy jobs, some, some big shoes to fill. We have to capture all this, as well as Logan has been doing all year long. So Eric's gonna come out and help us film. Logie's gonna stay here, getting all the editing stuff uh, lined out so we're not behind. So that's the plan. That's a lot to undertake, I know. But guys, we just hope you've been enjoying this series. It's funny because I'm talking to you now and we are uploading the series every day. I think episode five, no, episode six goes up today in about two hours. And uh, the response through the first five episodes has been amazing. People are liking it, they're being entertained. I might be learning something, I might just be entertained. So it's crazy for me to think in that there's two months from the episode we're uploading today till this episode that I'm filming today. And I wonder, what you guys are gonna think about everything in between. I think it just gets better and better and better. Uh, so if you're watching this, you've stuck along. This is like a weird time sphere we're talking about. I'm talking about things in the past that you guys are gonna watch or have watched and you're gonna watch. I don't know, this is crazy. Anyways, I'm gonna go hang out with my family for a couple hours before I have to take off. All right guys, it is 1.15 a.m. I've just made the executive decision to pack up and go sit the tree stand that I was gonna sit this morning and decided not to because this literally is the last chance that I have to get up there and sit and I at least want to put out a stealth camera. So I got a stealth camera to pack up there. I'm gonna get out of here guys, but as usual, in a hurry. So I will catch you guys on the mountain. Are you gonna stay here? Oh, this is kind of where I'll work around anyway, so. All right, dude. I don't know if you need help with anything. Good luck, man. <laughs> Nolan just spotted some deer down there. I'm gonna head to the tree stand. Nolan's gonna stay down here. I'll keep you posted. It is 3 p.m. And uh, with daylight savings, that's not gonna leave me much time to hunt. I'm determined to get up there, make the best out of like the last hour and a half of hunting. I need to get up there, change to my warm clothes, put out the decoy. A little breezy. Holy crap. It is cold. Headed up. Everything is uphill when you hunt up here. We saw four bucks on the way up here four bucks one mature buck with does so they're cruising they're up if i can get to this stand in time maybe some will cruise by but uh, it's gonna be cold once i get up there stop hiking i'm trying to hustle like i said this morning we never had the best of luck in the wind but we're gonna give it a chance i just jumped a doe so i'm gonna get this decoy out and uh, set it up, see if we can make something happen.
there as soon as possible. Three dogs. It's 4 p.m. I finally set up in the blind. Those does walked within 50 yards of this decoy. So uh, we got an hour and 15 minutes to hunt. You just never know what's going to come cruising by. Hopefully something comes by. I've got the GoPro set up. Range finder. Bow. Ready to rock and roll. It's just a waiting game now. Well, I was really banking on the wind dying down for last light, but it's not going to happen. It's about 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes of legal shooting light. But I think I'm going to climb down because I want to set a trail camera so the trail camera can take pictures while I'm in Colorado. Still had a fun night. It's awesome deer. No shooter bucks within range for me. It sounds like Nolan missed one. Big buck. I'm going to get down and catch up with him and then I'm going to go eat. Alright, found me a good tree to put this up. This is like where an elk, I think an elk rubbed here. Yeah, pretty tall. Anyways, the tree was nice and open and right on the trail. Right on the trail where those does came in tonight and probably the most popular trail right below my tree stand. So, there it is. Right there. Should get all the deer traveling this trail right here. The tree stands up to the left. Right around the corner up here. Up there. I say love you dinner. Eat an eight inch lot and get out of here, she said. Uh, I have a few questions for you. How has this hunting season been? Hard. Hard? For me? Yeah, this is coming from your perspective. What, what's your perspective of this whole year, the, this, the way we shot this, the season? Like how you're putting a video up yeah. every day. I think it's a great idea. I love it. I support you. I think that you're amazing. But so proud of you. It's been hard. It's, it's been, been hard on It's this been a rough one. Last one, though. I am proud of you though. I really, really am. What if I told you I have one more hunt after this? Do you? No. I would not be surprised. You <laughs> think don't. that I plan on this being the last one? I don't. I know better. <laughs> yeah, I not won't be hunting again until maybe December. There's an opportunity in December. I'll let you guys know later. But I'm just saying my goodbyes. Okay guys, I am headed out. Can I get hugs? Gage, what's been your favorite part of this season? Uh, it's my first year. That was probably my most favorite part so far, too. Probably will stick, too. That was a good time, huh? Yeah. Do it again next year. Come here, bud. I want you to hug goodbye. Here he comes. Oh, that's my big boy. I love you. When get, okay. What are we doing when I get back? Um, going to Disneyland. I going to Disneyland. We are going to Disneyland when I get back, and I'm super excited about that, even though I hate that place. Makes me excited to go spend some days with the family away. Uh, just enjoying ourselves, right? What, what's, what are you looking forward to in Disneyland? Uh, it's gonna be a lot warmer. Yeah, you know, true, true. Hi, Bray. There's nothing gonna happen to me. I'm just really nervous. I'm just saying bye. Are you sure? Yeah. She's coming, guys, get her. <laughs> Mariachi band's gonna come play a song. <laughs> Got her. Love ya. Bye, love you. Be good for mom and help out. I'll try. What's been your favorite part of this hunting season? I got an antelope. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure it's together. Yeah, what is that? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Bye, Dad, love you. All right, where's my little bird? Can you give Cat Dad a kiss goodbye? Mm. Can you say, tell the people at home bye-bye? Bye-bye. I'll see you in a few days. <laughs> I love you. Love you. <laughs> One more trip and we'll be done. Disneyland. Disneyland. <laughs> I'll stay home for that trip and yeah, you go right. and experience it. I'll leave the babies with you. Okay. <laughs> and that is the hardest part of what we do, is having to be away from our families and our loved ones. Ugh, it gets harder every time too, but just the end of the season, and I've been gone a lot, and uh, I'm not complaining. Please don't take this as a, that I'm complaining about what I do, what we do, because I will never complain about it. I just want to be real with you and tell you that even though that we get to do this for a living and we get to spend the whole fall outside all over the world all over the country 
all over the country, chasing different animals, hunting with different people, surrounding ourselves with some of the most amazing people, and we get to document it and share it with you guys. It's insane. If you would have told me this seven, eight years ago, I would have thought you were crazy. But we are. We've worked hard to get here, and it's because of you guys that we're able to do this. So this year, the this, this slogan for me was to slow it down, and that meant a lot. I struggled last year. I had some, I had some moments last year. If you guys watched our, our videos from last year, I, I lost my head a couple times on some hunts and either missed animals I should have hit, or hit animals and never found them, never recovered them, for whatever reason. And so the motto started out, slow it down, and that was just, Casey, don't get so in your head and slow it down and make the right shot that you can practice all year long. Well then I started thinking more and more about the whole slogan, slow it down, and was thinking about how fortunate and blessed we are to do what we do. That slow it down actually broadened and it, was, and it really became slow it down and enjoy everything. Enjoy every moment, enjoy the times when you're hunting, the times when you're in camp, the times when you're at home, the times when you're traveling, Enjoy it all because we are so fortunate to do what we do and we do not want to take this for granted. And that's a big reason why we decided to showcase this season the way we did and the way we have is to show you guys kind of some of the behind the scenes and kind of what it takes to run this thing and show you guys our life because this has become our life now. It's become our family's life and it's what we like to call the hush life. We hope that we have entertained. We hope that we have inspired. And we hope that we've just brought smiles to your faces. And we just, we want to say again how grateful we are for you guys at home watching this right now. And I've watched the last 70 days or so, however many it's been. I don't even know what episode this will be. But I'm really, this hunt is, uh, this is what the one I've, I've been looking forward to all of them. But this hunt was the one that really it's changed some things in my life. This is the hunt that I struggled on last year. Missed a deer, hit a deer last day couldn't recover it year before same thing shot a deer last day couldn't recover it it's, this thing has owned me and after last year and after we started putting up some of the, the videos i got a lot of hate comments i got a lot of, of comments saying that hey case maybe you uh should hang it up for for good you maybe shouldn't be a hunter you shoot a lot you miss a lot and man that really hit home to me sparked sparked something inside of me and so I made a pact last year that I was going to do everything I could to become uh, the best hunter I could and it started out with me doing the mountain ops 90 day challenge and that changed a lot I lost 55 pounds and I'm still right there down 50 55 pounds depending on what hunt we're on and that is that what really changed a lot for me it, it changed my uh, the way I looked at myself the way I treated other people it gave me confidence again in myself and my abilities and uh, it all stems from from my my struggles and my failures from last year on this hunt my redemption is to go and just absolutely hunt my butt off and do everything I can to harvest a nice mature deer and enjoy every second of it enjoy every minute of it and it will be my last time of the year and I can end this year knowing that I hunted as hard as I could and did everything in the off season and leading into the season I could do to get myself ready to be the best Casey I could be in the woods and this might seem really cheesy but some maybe some of you guys can relate and maybe some of you guys are, are watching this right now and, and thinking maybe I, there's some things I can do to become better and and I'm not just talking about a better hunter and that maybe that's the, the goal you start out with can you guys see me maybe you don't want to see me. but that was the goal I started out with was to become a better hunter and the small decisions I made and the small decisions I changed in my life led to me led me to become not only a better hunter but I feel like a better person a better dad a better husband and uh, like I said maybe some of you at home are watching this and, and you guys are thinking that you could do some more you could do a little more you could do a little more around the house you could do a little more with your kids you could have more confidence in yourself you could get after it in the woods a little harder and this doesn't all just get about health and fitness and losing weight but it's about just changing something in your life that you know is holding you back from becoming a better and a happier you and for me, that was losing some weight. And this has been a super long tangent or super long rant. 
uh, I hope you listen to it. I hope maybe I uh, inspire some of you. Maybe not. I don't know. But um, I'm just feeling a lot of emotion right now. Leaving on my last hunt. Leave my family one last time. Uh, but this is the hunt I've been looking forward to all year. And, here, and, and it's here. So I'm going to go pick Boardman up tonight. We're going to drive as far as we can. And then in the morning we'll make our way over to Colorado where we'll be hunting. Hopefully tomorrow afternoon. So, I am almost to the airport, but I had to make a quick pit stop here in Salt Lake City. It's a little sketchy where I'm at. EC Money is on his way to meet me, but we are, uh, this is some of our old camera gear. This is a Canon XA30. We uh, shot a lot of videos on this old bad boy. Still a great camera. But our good friends, uh, Micah and Garrett from Hidden Instinct, if you guys don't know who they are, go and follow them. They put up some of the best predator hunting videos on YouTube, if not the best. They are super talented and knowledgeable when it comes to calling and killing coyotes, which is super rad. But anyway, they're doing a big project this year where they're gonna tour around and hunt a bunch of different states. We're gonna try to join them on one, at least one or two of those stretches. But this old XA has been sitting in, in uh, my shop for the last couple months since we switched it to Sony. And so we decided that uh, those guys could use it a lot more than us. Uh, it's a great camera for uh, run and gun, calling coyotes, zoom in. And so we're gonna donate this to them and their project. So go and follow those guys. Uh, hopefully their project has come out by now, but it's Hidden Instinct on YouTube and on Instagram. Hopefully Eric gets here soon so I'm not, don't get shanked. So looking a little, a little sketchy. You never know what truck Eric's gonna show up in. He chose a grandpa truck today. Hey man, you, so, got, dude. you got the drugs? Dude, you, got, you live in a sketchy place, man. Yeah, you got the drugs, bro? <laughs> I feel like I was gonna get shanked here. This, it looks, it is it sketchy at this part of town? I mean, yeah. This I've been asked for money like, twice. No way. Yeah. This is probably like Rose Park-ish. Oh, really? I mean, it's just west of Salt Lake. It's so it's very sketchy. similar to like Compton then. It's just Compton. Dude, I got the drugs for you, bro. Give me the gear, dude. That's the drugs. Don't let anybody see that. Dude, go. All the way from Wisconsin, Mr. Mr. What's going on, Case? Mark Boardman, what's up, buddy? Dude, how was travel? Oh, see, we lost, uh, we lost man one. down, man down. Well, let's go. You ready? Let's, fight. let's do go. it. I'll grab this. Did you bring some snacks in here? Uh, yeah, lots of looking, snacks. looking to take snacks back. I Any, see. Anything you want to keep cold. Uh, Jim is the guy that watches this curb and Jim does a good job. He does not let people sit here longer than a minute and a half. I sat here for two minutes and he came and told me I had one more minute. So you're lucky Jim was on a uh, feeling a little nice tonight. You, you sat here for two minutes? Two and a half. I really pushed my limits. Are you insane? You could have gotten us both killed. <laughs> so me and Mark are gonna drive probably it's a six hour drive six and a half seven hour drive where we're going uh, and we're gonna get a hotel when we get tired and finish the drive tomorrow. We should be there by noon tomorrow hunting. Sounds good. Are you down with that? I'm totally down with that. All right, if I can get out of this place. Salt Lake Airport is the worst airport. It's a growing airport and they just don't have the size for it yet. But they are adding on. 